Another interesting topic here for us is to find the mean first passage times. Mean first passage times uh, uh, refers to the expected number of steps. Uh, so in, because the system keeps transitioning from one state to another, we want to see what's the no expected number of transitions from one state to next, or, or on average, how long does it take to go from one state to next? Because currently we are in a certain state, we're curious to see on X, what's the expected number of uh, reaching a certain state we are interested in. All right, we want to find that out. Uh, so, uh, let me turn this on. <clears throat> so M, M sub IJ, is called the mean first passage down from a state i to state j, i, j. Um, for an ergodic chain, so first we want to make sure just like a steady state is an ergodic chain, that m sub i, j be the expected number of transitions before we first reach a state j. Um, given that we are currently in state i, this, this should be little i, not capital I. Um, so what is, M12 in the cola example, for example, uh, what does it mean? It means the expected. So if someone current is some right now, someone is purchasing, uh, has purchased cola one. How many purchases on average do they make until they switch to? It's not the probability; it's the number of purchases on average. How many on average? How many purchases do they make until they change to? They switch to cola two on average. Some of them instantly go purchase cola two next. Some of them keep purchasing cola one, and the probability of purchasing cola one was ninety percent, and they keep doing that. But on average, we want to see some of them switch in three steps, three purchases. We want to see on average what's that number. All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna use this formula. This is from your book that gives us the number of uh, steps but to tell you what it means or, and why we came up with this formula i'm going to show you in a, in a graphic that i make here so you're going to go from a set i to j you either go in one step directly you either go from a set i to j directly with the probability of p i j right from transition matrix or first you go to another state, K, whatever that K is, it's just, it's just not J, it's somewhere else. You go somewhere else. And then from there, it takes a certain number of steps to go to J. And that is according to this definition, M, K, J, right? And then it also makes, you have to go one step to K and then from K, you have to go M, K, J to go from K to J. So you, you either go this route with this probability, so either one step with this probability, one step with this probability, or, or thus, you go to from I to K with this probability plus, and, and so you're getting basically the expected value, right? Expected value is probability times value. The value, which is the number of steps going from I to J is either one times the probability or one plus mkj, one plus mkj. And what's the probability of going through this route is pik, right? This is the probability of going from i to k. And if we simplify that, uh, we are going to get to this formula. So whenever you want to find the expected number of steps going from i to j, uh, you write one plus P, I, K, M, K, J. Here there is a pattern. So you write all P, so see P starts from I, M ends in J. So you have I, J. You have I, J here, and you hear all these subscription, uh, the subscripts uh, start with I, end with J. And in between you have K, right? In between you have K. So P, I, K, First I go to K, this is probability that I go to K. And then if I'm in K, it takes MKJ to get to this point. Okay, so just keep that in mind. We also have another formula that expected number of 
uh, steps to come back to itself is one over pi i. For example, m11 means if right now I'm drinking cola one on average, how many purchases do I make uh, until I purchase cola one again? Or if it's sunny today, on average, how many days should pass until it's sunny again? If it's raining today, how many days until it's raining again? That's M11, M33, M66, whatever that pi is. So let's calculate M11 for the example that we had, the cola example. So there uh, we found out that pi one was two third, pi two was one third, and M11 is just gonna be one over pi one, pi i. One over two third is 1.5 steps on average. M12, um, sorry, this should be M22. M22 is gonna be uh, three steps. So if you're drinking cola two, on average, on average, I mean, average of all the people who purchased Cola 2, who last purchased Cola 2. On average, they purchased Cola 2 again after three purchases. So uh, we want to find this, pro this uh, M12 following this formula. So to find M12, I'm going to write C, I, J, and then in between I have K. I'm going to one, two, here, all right, one plus, one plus, uh, P, one, two, and in between, I put anything that's not J. So I have two states, one and two. I'm going to two, so my J is two. What is anything other than two is just one, so I put one here. And I'll solve another example for you. So P11, one, one, I already read that from the transition matrix, one plus 0.90 from the transition matrix and M12. So now from this equation, I can say uh, one minus 0.90 equals one times M12 equals one, and then I get M12 to be 10 steps. So if I'm drinking cola one on average, it takes 10 steps to purchase cola two or 10 purchases until I purchase cola two. Another example, expected number of steps going from two to one. One plus P M two one. See, it starts with two ends in one. It starts with two ends in one. In between, because I'm going to one, this is my J. I'm gonna list here all the K's that are not one. So I have only two steps. Other than one, I only have two. So I write two. P two two M two one. So this I go to two to one, and in between I have two. Note that in between you have the same uh, K here. So I read this part from the transition matrix, 0.8, and I uh, solve that equation until I get M21 equals uh, five. Let's look at another example. For Markov chain with three states, try to find these formulas. So the previous one had two states. Now we have three states, and we want to follow this. We basically want to uh, write this formula for all of these. So M13, I'm going to write according to this, 1 plus P M, it starts with 1, ends in 3, and in between I put all the states that are not 3, because I'm going to 3, because 3 is my J. All right. Basically, I have three states. I write 1 plus, 1 plus P M, one three because this is one three plus p m one three so for the second uh so script uh i put k's that are not any k that's not j so my j is here three what are states other than three do i have one and two one and two hopefully for this example you get the pattern that's repeating here uh, so now pause the video and try to find out this one according to this. Or basically, uh, in how many ways I can, I can go to three indirectly. These are the ways that you go to three indirectly. One plus indirectly, I can go back to one, then go to three. Directly would be just one to three. Indirectly is go back to one again, then go to three. 
PR one to one times M one to one, one to three. <clears throat> Another indirect way is go to two and then to three. So go to two, then two to three. Okay. Now this one, I would write one plus indirectly going from two to three. That's two to two, then to three, or two to one, then one to three. So I'm gonna write that here. One plus P two, two, M two, three. You see that they all start with two and in three. Start with two and in three, two, three. In between anything other than three. Okay, so you see that for the previous one, I had two estates. Uh, so it had two, uh, only two terms here. Here I have three estates and I have three terms here. One, two, three. Last one, pause the video and try to solve this one. Of course, I'll write uh, one plus P three, something other than one, which could be three or two, and then R, and then M, that thing to one. So all the indirect path to from three to one, it's three to three, then one, or three to two, then one. So one plus P three to three, then M three to one, or three to two, then two to one. This should be two, sorry. That's a mistake that I made. Um, but this should be always the same, three, three, two, two, one, one. That's an easy way for me to check your uh, answers, for example. All right, let's solve another example, which is combines the application of steady states and uh, mean first passage time. Okay, pause the video, read the description, and then I'll come back to it. All right, here we have two stocks. We don't know which one to purchase now. Basically, we want to know, we are long-term investors. We want to see which one performs better in the long term. So stock one, when it's, and each stock we are assuming, to simplify it, we are assuming that each takes only two values, uh, either 10 or 20. Okay, the first one, um, if it's $10 right now, it's going to be $10 again tomorrow with 80% chance. And if it's $20 now, it's gonna remain $20, 90% chance. Next one, stock two. If it's $10, stock two has two, per, two uh, values only, 10 or two, 25. It only fluctuates between these two. If a stock two sells $10 today, 90% chance gonna remain 10, uh, 25%, uh, and if it's 25 today, 85% chance it remains 25. You see that the second one has a chance that becomes more expensive, but with a smaller probability. So on the average, which stock will sell for a higher price? Find and interpret all mean first passage times. Uh, so first I wanna do uh, answer the first part. On average, which stock will sell for a higher price? Basically, which stock should I choose? So what are my options at step one? Second, a step, find the transition probability matrices, which are all already given here. Third step, a steady state probabilities. Fourth step, expected values. Uh, step four, expected values. And a step five, the one that performs better or gives me, has a higher price in the long term. And then I'll uh, find some of these uh, mean first passage times. So, uh, step one. Option A is a stock, a stock one. Option two is uh, option B is a stock uh, two. Probabilities, according to the problem description, if it's $10, 80% gonna remain $10. If it's $20, 90% uh, gonna remain $20. And these are just the complements that make each row to be one. Some of each row should be one. Same thing for uh, a stock two. If it's $10, 90% is gonna remain $10. 10% uh, is gonna go to $25. If it's $25 today, uh, it's gonna be uh, remain $25 tomorrow with 85% chance. And this one automatically becomes 15%. From here, I can calculate 
the uh, uh, steady state probabilities or pi's using that uh, vector pi equals vector pi times p uh, formula plus this, and I'll find uh, these probabilities as a steady state probabilities for both stocks. That's the step, calculate the expected values. What are the expected values? Basically pi one times $10. What is expected value? Probability times outcome. With this probability, one third is gonna be $10 because that's pi one. So probability times value, $10. Probability times value, $20 with the probability of two thirds. That means $16.6. Same thing for up for a stock two, and I get a 0.6 times 10 plus 0.4 times 25, and I get 16. So we see that on average, or uh, the ex um, uh, our expected value shows that stock one is gonna have a higher price. So it's better to choose option A. Now, we are asked if a stock one is ten dollars today on the average how many days it takes for it to become ten dollars again because so 10 was a state one back to itself how many days how many steps on average so that's m11 m11 is one over pi one we calculate pi one and it was one third so three days Question two, if a stock one is $10 today, on the average, how many days it takes for it to become $20? So basically M12, M12. And M12, because we only have two states, it's gonna be one plus P M12. Here, anything other than two, we only have one, because we have two states, two terms, one, two. And then here, we solve it and we get five days. All right? Thank you, that's um, everything we had for today.